Hi, welcome back to Colesky RC. Different location to film today. I just wanted to get this video out and the room I normally use is a bit unusable at the minute because there's some work going on here. So we're going to do a review on the new DJI FPV drone. You've obviously probably seen loads of videos on it by now. But I want to discuss, is it right for you? Is it right for me? Who is it right for? Is it is it going to be the new answer? For, is it for beginners? Is it for experienced FPV pilots? Is it in fact an FPV drone? So, let's have a look. So first thing we're going to have a look at is the drone itself. So if you see my video earlier on today, I did a video on these. These are the braces that go between the front and rear arms, just to give it a bit more rigidity. So as you can see, the drone itself, it comes with another one of these. It comes with a smoked grey canopy on I take, I take off. You take off the screws at the side, the screws down the front, same on the other side, and then this bit comes off first. This part flicks off and allows you to take off that back. It's quite awkward to clip on and off. Under here you have your gimbal, which is a single axis gimbal, so it only goes up and down. The stabilisation on this is done by EIS, and I'll explain why that is later on and why they didn't put a three axis gimbal on this thing. You have obstacle avoidance at the front, which is not the same obstacle avoidance you would get on a Mavic. It will tell you of impending crashes and it will also slow the drone right down but if you continue to push forward you can actually crash the drone underneath you have optical sensors and you have a light underneath as well in the back of the drone is the battery the battery is a 6s 2000 milliamp hour battery proprietary it costs 139 pounds i know it's expensive and you only get one with it I, this was 1249 with what's on the table here and more batteries obviously more money and I decided just to get the one battery to get the 14 so minute flight time out of it on the top of here you have a connector so it's a pushing connector rather than the typical connectors you'll see underneath which is that the brass contacts this is the proper connector because it's 6s and then to fit the battery back in the drone it's simply a matter of push pushing it in and there you go you plug the battery in there and then the drone turns on the similar way it will do on all DJI drones. So the first press of the button shows your battery status. And then if you long press after that, you will get the drone to turn on, which we'll look at in a minute. We'll actually turn the drone on. The motors are proprietary again, and so are the propellers. So the propellers are fast release props. So as you can see, if you're used to DJI, they're very, very similar. The props clip in place. Let's put one in. You can't actually fit them wrong. The, pla the props are plastic, not polycarbonate, which is a disappointment, but I didn't really expect anything else. Red to red, so your red centre circle goes on the red motors here, and then the black ones are these props. So you can't go wrong. You can't actually push them on the wrong way around anyway. They will not go on. So that's the drone itself. <laughs> My cat's coming to join us, I think. Right, Chloe? I don't think she's coming to join us. The second thing are the FPV goggles. So these are the V2s. So obviously the V1s came out, these are the V2. There is some subtle differences. There will be video out on here to your smartphone to allow a spectator. These also have an 810 resolution screen instead of the 720s. And there is a different way these the antennas work on sending and receiving. I'm not going to go into that. There's loads of videos on it. And it will make the video really, really long. But there is a difference. So you can't really use the ones you had on your V1s. I intend to keep the V1s. Even though these will work on the air unit and the CAD existor. But you've still got to go into your menu and swap it around. And I've decided for the money they'll be worth now. Just to keep the V1s. So I'll run with V1s and V2s for this one. Apart from that, the only difference is you get a battery. The slightly higher refresh rate as well for latency. You get the bat DJI battery for the headset and it has an on and off switch. The same way as all DJI's work. First one to press tells you how much life you've got. Second press long, turn it on. You get the cable that comes with that that plugs into the head unit and you do not get a holder on the head strap. 
for the battery, which is absolutely ridiculous, really. Even to put it in your pocket, I think. The other thing which is really annoying about these is they know damn well that this is a piece of garbage. So the, the first plate you get for this is garbage because if you've got the original DJI, I paid the 15 and bought the DJI one that stops here, fits your face better, kills the light apart from a small bit by your nose. This is just light everywhere. So they didn't swap this, which is absolutely amazing that these are supposed to be a slight upgrade. You think that's something they would have done. Moving on to the controller. So this is the controller. So the controller is a upgrade from the V1. You cannot use this controller with an air unit or a Cadix Vista. And there's obviously reasons for that is this is dedicated buttons on here. So if you look, we'll go through the controller actually. So this is programmable, this button on this side. You can program that to what you want through the goggles. Everything's done through the goggle screen. And I have that as gimbal full, gimbal full, fully up, fully down and centered. So I can just quickly hit that button to flick it back. On this side, I have my modes. So I have M, sorry, N, which is normal. So it's in normal mode at the minute. The switches work this way. So this towards you is in normal. If I pop it into the center, I get sports mode, which allows me to fly up to, I think it's 60, uh, 60 miles an hour. And if I flick it all the way back, it puts it into full manual acro mode. Only when you've released it in the goggles. So you have to go into the goggles and release that setting. If you don't, when you press that, it'll just stay in sports mode. It'll just give you two sports modes. Gimbal is controllable from here. You've got an on and off button on here and you've got a programmable button. So I, I have set this for my lights, which I'll show you when I turn the drone on in a bit. And then on the top you've got the start and stop for your... Sorry, you've got start and stop on here. You've also got your camera functions on here. And on this one you have a pause button and a return to home. So the pause button. So if you're flying this in acro and it all starts to go horribly wrong, if you hit that button, it will put your drone straight upright and hover. It will just get you out of the out of the problem and go into a hover. So quite a unique feature, and it's a really nice feature. So this this controller, if you reckon, if you're thinking it looks quite familiar and you've seen it on my channel, it's because you have. This is the Tango 2 controller, and as you can see, there is not much difference between the both of them. Very, very similar controllers indeed. So they've actually obviously stole the look of this, the feel of this. This is a really well-made controller. I need to say that straight off the bat. You have your sticks in here that go in here. So you can see your sticks. There's your sticks and they just screw into the front of here. Now one thing you will notice is this has got center, I can't get this out of here. This has got centering sticks. I think we'll be leaving that one in there. Yeah, let's get that out there. So you can, I've got it. So this one has centering sticks, as you can see. And an FPV drone obviously will have a throttle that goes right to the bottom. So it'll be a non-centering stick. So I fly mode one, so my stick will be like that. And it just rests at the bottom. This rests in the center. You can open up the back of this thing. Just pull these one of these sides apart and put and do a screw and it will allow this to become a standard throttle. I've left it as it is because to fly in both you could do with it in a centre. If you want to just fly non in the mode that I'll explain to you in a minute. If you don't just want to fly it in the Mavic mode for instance, you'd have your throttle fully down all the time. So it's better just to leave it there and then just control it as you will. So the modes on this thing. So if I have it in manual mode, uh, normal mode. Saying that. If I'm in normal mode, this will fly very much like a Mavic. Except it's only got a single axis gimbal. If I have it in sports mode, it will also it will be allow me to turn using a single stick. So instead of so if you fly in a Mavic and you turn, you tend to do this. Whether you fly in an FPV drone and you turn, you do let's get this on camera, you're doing that as you're coming round, you're swooping. It's going to give you a large arc on your turn. And to do that, you use both sticks at the same time. So you have to use both sticks to get that kind of feel. On this, you can do it with one stick when it's in sports mode. It's a nice little feature. So this is, this is probably the most talked about drone and the most, I don't know, I don't, split opinion 
that I've ever seen. And that's because people say it's not an FPV drone. Well, of course it's an FPV drone, because for an FPV drone, all it has to do is allow you to have a first-person view through goggles. And, of course, it does that. What it doesn't do, in my opinion, is become an acro drone. So, this is your typical acro drone. So, I've just built this. This is an iFlight Sedora frame. I've put iFlight motors on it, and I've got a Mamba stack in it. And I have got the DJI Air unit and camera. So I built this. It took me about an hour and a half to build. Not even that. Pull an hour. And this allows me to swap anything for crash. So if I crash this arm breaks. I can just replace the arm. Just buy a new arm. And it simply bolts in there. Undo my bit of tape. Undo the four screws to the motor. And I've done. Seconds. Well, a couple of minutes. Worst case scenario. I smash the frame and break it in the centre. These frame, This frame was like £38 from the UK. I could just get a frame, get it tomorrow, rebuild the drone, have it back in the air. A motor burns out, I simply can just go buy a new motor. The ESC goes out, which it does, I've had a few of them go, you just go out and buy a new ESC or replace the whole stack. Again, this stack was about 50 quid. For 50 quid, I've got it back up in the air. And that's the big difference. This drone is obviously full acro and is designed to do split S's and all the rest of the stuff. Will this do a split S? Yes, it will. But the problem you've got with this is, apart from the fact it weighs over 800 grams, it's not as aerodynamic as possibly it should have been. And also, you cannot just start replacing bits on this willy-nilly. DJI say it, there will be arms available shortly. Uh, there certainly isn't at the minute, so you can replace that yourself. I don't know if that will come with a motor. I, have, I don't know about motors being available. Are you going to be able to buy the motors? Are you going to be able to buy the flight controllers? There's a lot of stuff when you take this off. It's a bit scary when you look at it if you need to start replacing stuff. I've seen a few crashes of this so far, which is why I put the arm braces on. And it doesn't look the most sturdy of things. So who is this for? Why did I buy it? So I bought it because this will be fantastic for just flying around and getting cinematic. If I want to fly it in manual mode and I don't want to throw it about too much, just want to get cinematic shots, this will be, should be fantastic because of the EIS. So imagine the camera in here is the same as the DJI, I can't remember what it's called, uh, Osmo, oh, DJI Osmo Action, or whatever, was it now? Osmo Action? The action camera they did, I've got, I've got one actually. This will give you that, apart from it's got a single axis gimbal, because EIS does the rest. So all the stabilising is done through that. The reason this thing hasn't got a three axis gimbal is because when you're flying and you are doing these turns and you're on your side virtually, you do not maybe you do not necessarily want the horizon to stay level. You want the horizon to follow the camera so it can see how you're flying. If you've got a flat horizon all the time, you could have been flying your Mavic or anything else. Hence Hence why they've done that, in my opinion. Uh, this is very much my opinion video. Do I like it? Yes. Do I think it's overpriced? Probably, yeah. Is it going to sell well? Yeah, you better believe it. So I'm going to turn it on quick, just so you can hear this thing start up, because I love the sound of it. So, double press on there. I'm not going to bother turning the goggles on. You've all seen some goggles and you're not going to be able to see it in the screen from using my camera anyway. So we turn the controller on, go to the back, let's double press. And let's turn it on. I love that noise. Sounds like a robot from an 80s film. So once it's connected, which it will do shortly, you'll just watch the lights to go solid. Obviously, you should be connecting the goggles at the same time here. Obviously, I haven't bothered turning mine on. Um, and then you are, you're free to go and fly it. Taking a long time to connect. There we go, so we're connected. So, on the back of here, as you can see, we've got loads of nice lights. These lights are totally adjustable, so you can have these solid, you can have them flashing, or you can have them doing what they're doing, which is now, which is a night rider effect. You can turn your front lights on and off. And change the colour. So these yellow lights I have here, you can change the colour. Um, and the colour will match whatever the colour of lights I've chosen on here. So I've chosen yellow, you can have blue, you can have loads of different things. Again, everything's done through the goggles. And I control them by my C1 button. So if I double press my C1 button, will it single press it? 
Ah, I think I didn't. I think I turned it off. If originally I had, I had this set, so when I double pressed that button, this changed. But I think I changed it because I didn't want to catch it accidentally and turn my lights off. Again, simple setup through the goggles. Anyway, you just go into there and you go into the remote control section, into the control section, and you can adjust this and this to have them do whatever you want to do. On the screen, you can see the usual stuff. You can see. Uh, through the FPV goggles it is different on these and it is on the first one I can tell you the video the quality in the goggles is Superb it's so much better than the original DJI goggles and they were amazing as they were but this thing's something else it goes to another level uh, But you can tell on there what your battery is and all the rest of it where you are your GPS coordinates uh, How many satellites you've got all the things you'd expect Obviously you can return to home on this thing whenever you want it's got to be turned to home mode in it provided you're in these modes and then you flick it on so for me it's for someone like that wants to fly it like i want to fly it i do not think this is an fpv uh drone to go fly acro i don't think that at all i think you'd be better off spending your money on this so this, this cost me roughly 300 to build and that's including the air unit and everything else this is coming in at 600 and something pounds it's a lot of money now the, the one benefit that's got that this hasn't got this is like got what would be the equivalent of sticking a gopro on the top of this which will then make this more expensive it will probably bring this build up to I don't know, a couple of hundred quid let's say i can get a gopro for it'll bring this quad up to 500 but then i need a control if i buy the dji one that's 300 that's 800 and then i spend 500 600 oh and all of a sudden i'm back at the same price so that's something you need to be a bit mindful for although it looks expensive by the time you've bought everything you want for this including a camera to go on the top if you just want to record use your footage which is 1080p from there you don't need anything else this is also much lighter but if you want to do that that's what you need to do and obviously we haven't got a battery or a battery charger included in the prices i've just been quoting so although this looks really expensive it's probably about right for what it is if you're wanting to buy digital if you're wanting to buy the goggles and you want a controller remember this controller here will not work with the original air unit and cadix vista whether they make stuff in the future that works with this that will not surprise me. There's different combos come out that work with that controller and the V2 goggles. That remains to be seen. Whether the I don't think they'll ever stop. Well, certainly not for a bit anyway. Stop the um, updates and stuff for the V1s. I think they'll continue for a bit. But eventually, you're probably going to get to the point where the V2s is probably all this apart. Quite a long video, and I haven't shown any flight footage because I need to make. I'm going to make another video. I can't just do show this all in one go and let you make a 10 minute video there's far too much to talk about there's far too much things it does that i haven't touched on in here there's loads of videos out there joshua badwell's done a good one there's some other videos out there that are just ludicrous people smashing it and saying it's garbage because they crashed it and it, it landed hard and they broke something it's not crash and that's easy enough said in it but i don't class this as that type of drone i just if i want to do that i'll fly something like this i've got quite a lot of these type of drones these uh, are easy to fix which is a massive advantage apart from is a massive advantage you're going to have over that so hope you enjoyed the video it went on awful long time and um, there's loads of stuff i haven't touched if you do want to ask something ask me in the comments i will have a video coming up shortly a flight video we're going to have quite a big series on this thing because there's a lot, I want to go far more in depth with it and discuss the and there's also other stuff I want to uh, discuss which is the parts you can buy for this so you can already buy some parts for this although they're not in stock but we'll discuss that in another video thanks ever so much for watching have a fantastic day